Hello again, I am Jim Bob, and welcome back to F1 Manager Challenge Mode. Uh, this is the series where we make things especially hard for ourselves. Uh, we have got two very young, inexperienced rookie drivers as our lineup. We also have a series of rules uh, which we have to follow uh, throughout the career. Uh, which are down in the video description if you want to get a read of those in full uh, basically we have restrictions on testing uh, not testing sorry restrictions on development restriction on facility upgrades uh, all contracts must be honored uh, we can't uh, sack somebody just because we want to hire somebody else we've got to wait till their contract expires before we can either renew or replace them uh, yeah it's it's going to be brutally hard. <laughs> uh, it's been a very tough start to the season. The first three races have not gone well. Uh, we've been scrapping at the very, very back with Williams and looking an absolute you know, eon off the pace. I'm hoping as developments start to come in, we will claw back a little bit of pace and I'm also hopeful that as our drivers gain more experience uh, they will start to get faster and faster and we will hopefully by the end of season one I hope start to uh, look a little bit more promising and start to look uh, a bit more competitive uh, and by competitive I mean getting into the, the sort of the midfield as a, and getting away from the back of the grid I don't expect us to be uh, challenging for you know wins or podiums this season in any way shape or form and uh, to be honest i don't think we're going to be challenging for wins and podiums next season either i think uh, we are going to be uh, hopefully uh, firmly in the midfield next season and uh, that's probably where we're going to stay for you know for the whole of the season season three i think is when things are really going to pick up so uh, uh, let's push on and get uh, season one Know, further out of the way so to speak uh, we're heading to Imola for the uh, uh, Emilia Romagna Grand Prix in Italy round four uh, we have got a brand new suspension on the car uh, that was completed at the end of the last episode and that has been fitted uh, so we'll be running that uh, brand new suspension here in this race it's not really going to give us much in the way of a pace improvement but it will help improve our brake cooling uh, so hopefully that'll mean less uh, lockups, less running wide, uh, less drive error, and maybe even a little bit better tyre wear. We'll have to see how that works out. Uh, in terms of uh, an update as to where we are with everything else, let's take a quick look at our facilities. Uh, we are limited to two car development facility upgrades for the entire season, and we can only upgrade one each, uh, one of these facilities Um Per season so uh, we're on the design facility center upgrade that is about halfway through and once that's done we can't upgrade that center again this season next season we can but this season we can't we've got one upgrade in this whole category left uh, and that's going to be uh, either the wind tunnel or the CFD uh, I'm not sure which one yet it'll probably be the wind tunnel but we'll see We'll see which one is in worse condition uh, when we've actually got some money to spend. Uh, no restrictions on other facilities. So you can see we've got uh, upgrades going through on the team hub, the scouting department and the race sim. Uh, getting that race sim up to the full level five as quickly as possible is absolutely critical for our driver development. And then operationally, uh, we're upgrading the helipad. Uh, we want to get that up uh, nice and high to start gaining money from the uh, sponsors. We're not going to be earning a huge amount of money this season from sponsors because we're going to be struggling just to make the basic incentives. I don't know if we're going to be in a position to actually make guarantees this year, which is quite a scary thought. Uh, and the tour centre, we're giving a little nudge uh, just to get a little bit of extra cash coming in. There's no point building a memorabilia room. Um, morale isn't really going to be too much of an issue, I hope. Uh, team attractiveness again not going to be an issue we can't hire anybody now for at least a couple of seasons and uh, well, we don't have any memorabilia <laughs> we haven't got any trophies to display so uh, yeah there's no point uh, putting that in there in terms of our staff this is where we are with our staff uh, Andrew Green is by far the weakest link in our team but we can't replace him till his contract runs out in two years time uh, so we've just got to make the best of it and, and boost him where we can 
Alessandro Cinelli is looking quite good for us as our aero guy. He's not too far from his next point as well. Uh, and then our drivers, uh, Freddy is probably going to get a point at the end of this race, which will be good. Uh, we'd need to get his breaking up uh, ASAP. That's holding him back quite substantially at the moment. Uh, Felipe is uh, way off because he got a point at the end of the last race. So he's, he's at least two races away, I think, from another point. Uh, but yeah, we've got a little bit of work to do with our drivers. And Nico is just going to sit there and collect a paycheck. We're not running him at all this season. So uh, let's have a look at our uh, performance targets. We want one car in the top 15 as our incentive. Yeah, that's going to be a struggle. Uh, fastest lap is definitely not going to happen. And getting both cars in the top 15, uh, we'll be very lucky if we can do that. And that's probably going to be more down to retirements than anything else uh, is probably the only way we're going to achieve both cars in the top 15 uh, so let's head to Imola the hills of Tuscany are green to the south but here in Imola the air is red hot welcome to Ferrari's turf for the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix the track has been around since the 60s but the first official Formula One race was held here in 1980. Let's see what excitement lies ahead this year. This is Imola, and it's an old school track with plenty of elevation changes and lots of corners. There's only one DRS zone here, but it follows the long straight right before Tamburello and should see plenty of action. We might still be early in the season, but that doesn't mean we can sit back and relax. Everything is up for grabs and nothing is certain at this stage. Let the weekend begin! Radio check. I am Radio muted, check. yes. I've been going the whole now. time muted. Ugh, I feel so stupid. Uh, thank you, Colin. <laughs> right, let's uh, <laughs> send the drivers out. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Uh, so, yeah, uh, welcome to, uh, <laughs> to Challenge Mode. Uh, this is the series where we make things uh, intentionally difficult for ourselves. Uh, with... Uh, young inexperienced rookie drivers uh, a lot of restrictions on uh, who we can hire when we can hire them uh, how we upgrade the car how we upgrade our facilities etc etc uh, all the details are in the video description so please feel free to check those out in full uh, at your leisure 
we are running a brand new suspension for this race so we'll be uh, getting some car park knowledge gained on that while we are whizzing around here this weekend and it's been a, a, a 24 hours of, of drama in the uh, in the f1 world you know all of a sudden it's managerial hot potatoes Andrea Seidel has uh, left McLaren uh, and gone to Sauber as uh, CEO, not as team principal. Uh, obviously, Freddie Vasseur, who was at uh, Sauber, has gone to uh, Ferrari to replace Mattia Bonotto. And Williams have, uh, have binned off um, both um, Jos Capito, their uh, team manager, and uh, Francois Javier uh, de Maison has also left. Their head of aero has gone as well. So uh, big, big changes. Uh, for, uh, McLaren, sorry, have promoted Andrea Stella from within to become their new uh, team boss for next season. How's the uh, but yeah, so currently Salba slash Alfa Romeo uh, are without a team boss. Uh, that will be uh, the first job for... Um, for Seidel to uh, to deal with when he takes over in January, and uh, Williams are without a team boss and a head of aero as well as things currently stand. So uh, lots of changes. What's your thoughts on coming in or doing any more? I got a, a little news alert about uh, the result. 3-0, wasn't it, for Argentina in the end? This is probably his last opportunity to win the World Cup, Messi. So... Uh, yeah, it looks like he's he's going to be in with a good chance. Ooh, we have a VSC. Someone's crashed. Yeah, uh, oh, Joe. Joe is out of the session. What has he done? Has he crashed here? We've had a car run wide. He has. All right, there we go. That's our drivers called in. So, what do we need to change? Uh, the rear wing. We need a 13 rear wing. Okay. Uh, we also need to change the roll bar. So, let's go to the 6.4. Actually, can I get away with a 5.5? I might be able to get away with a 5.5. Five. Uh, 3.5. Let's drop that to... I can't change that too much. Uh... That's all looking pretty close, actually. Yeah, let's uh, let's give that a whirl. See how that shakes out. Uh, let's throw on some fresh tyres. And a good start over here. It's just the cornering and braking that needs to change. Let's try that and see what that does to the car. Another VSC, or is that the same one? I think it's the same one.
Oh, we've got a lock up. I think he kept it out of the wall. Yes, he did. Oh, big lock up there. That improved brake cooling, uh, showing its, uh, its value straight away there. That's the other great thing about uh, improving the brake cooling is while it won't eliminate all mistakes entirely, it will hopefully reduce the severity of any mistakes when it comes to lockups. Gives our drivers more of a chance of keeping it out the wall. So uh, yes, this uh, challenge mode has been brutal so far for us. Uh, we have had <laughs> three races and three not very great races at that. that uh, like results are going to be very, very hard to come by. I don't think we're going to do very well at all this season. I think we'll be lucky if we score points. It's all about trying to lay the foundations ready for... A push into a the midfield now. next season. So this was the Aston Martin. Try and get uh, as many development points for our drivers as possible. Put the car in a slightly better position They've for next up year. Through a combination of upgrades and research. And try and put some better facilities in place to help develop the car next year as well. Uh, Chris Cronin. Uh, not Chris Cronin, sorry. Um, our, our weakest point is our technical chief. He's only a 69 rated. And uh, we can't replace him for the next two seasons. So we're going to have to kind of just tough it out in that respect. How does it feel? Okay, a uh, big difference in track performance there, or track acclimatization between our two drivers, uh, mainly because of the lockups there for Felipe flattening out his his, uh, his acclimatization curve. Uh, but both drivers have ended up with a 91% setup after the first session. Let's uh, see, that's a forward step for Freddy. It's actually a backward step for Felipe. Quite a significant one as well. Uh, so let's undo that change and let's go the opposite direction and see what happens if we do that. I'm going to put on some hard tyres. I'm going to run for 20 laps. And for Freddy, same again, 20 laps. Uh, what change do we need to make to his car now? Uh, oh, the roll bar is still not good. So that is going to be a 6-4 roll bar. Uh, we need to pull the toe in, or the camber in a bit more. And do that with the toe. We need to pull the front wing in a little bit as well. There we go. Let's give that a crack and see how that works. Radio Radio oh, Messi broke Batistuta's goal record. Was that uh, World Cup goals or just uh, goals for the national team in general? Because I would have thought he'd already have that. Crashed. Sounds like 
there's been a crash. Here's uh, the Bottas replay. Has crashed. Now let's watch this. The Alfa Tosa. Romeo involved in this one. That's where Joe crashed out oh, in the first the session. Crash there. I'm a little worried <laughs> that our car sandwiched in between two Ferraris there that we might get uh, clobbered here. Kind of want that Ferrari to get past us nice and quickly and easily. There we go. And nice to see that uh, Vesti and Drogovic's pace is pretty evenly balanced. Uh, Felipe was uh, much faster. I say much faster. He was a couple of tenths faster in Australia, uh, which meant it was very hard for Freddie to stay with him. Uh, but they look a lot more evenly matched. In fact, Vesti might even have a slight edge. It's tricky to know for sure because uh, Felipe is being hassled and harried by Schumacher there. I think someone's run wide. Okay, we went 100 with uh, with Freddy's setup there. Excellent news. Uh, what about Felipe? This one's going to be the trickier one. Oh, there we go. 100 with Felipe as well. Beautiful. So both our drivers have got their setups absolutely nailed. Their lap times are pretty close to each other. They don't have the consistency to nail those lap times every lap, but... Uh, so they're fluctuating a little bit, but they are on a very similar pace. That's that's helpful. Uh, let's just put some more fuel in the car and send them straight back out again. Equal Mateus for the World Cup appearances. That low time Mateus, the German uh, that you're referring to there. I remember watching him as a kid. We're kind of overrunning our cars a little bit in this session, but it's it's because I want to get that uh, car park knowledge up. Okay, I'm actually going to call Freddie in so that he's got some uh, knowledge left to earn in the last session. We'll leave Felipe out for a couple more laps. We've just had a car run wide. There we go. So a very productive FP2 for us here. Uh, got both the setups nailed and dialed in. Got some good run time on track. We've uh, gained a lot of track knowledge and also uh, started to really bed in that new suspension in terms of car park knowledge as well. So uh, a single good run in FP3 should get us uh, some nice bonuses. go beautiful stuff all right as I was saying at the start of the race uh, weekend before 
I was informed I was muted. Uh, the rain, I don't know if that's actually going to help or hinder us. Uh, our drivers um, don't have great adaptability uh, values. Uh, Felipe's is, I think, 48, and uh, uh, Vesti is somewhere between 50 and 60. I think it's like 56. So neither of them have particularly good adaptability uh, values. Uh, so they are going to struggle uh, as conditions start to fluctuate. Once they become settled, they should be a, a bit better. But as the track gets wetter and then gets drier, that's the, they're the windows where they're going to struggle. Um, so if, the, if it keeps fluctuating throughout the uh, throughout the race, then that could be problematic. Radio for us. check. Radio check. Radio check. And uh, someone's crashed. Is that an alpha off at turn seven oh, at Tosa? Crash. It is, it's Joe <laughs> again. He doesn't even complete his outlap. He goes straight, you know, straight out into the wall and straight back into the pits again. That's what he did in uh, the beginning of FP1. Hopefully, that will have a knock-on effect for his performance this weekend. And when it comes to the race. Going in with a, a less than favourable setup. Who's running wide there? And a lack of spare parts as well, because uh, Bottas has also broken a front wing on uh, on Tosa as well. So uh, yeah. if either of the Alphas break a front wing this weekend in the race, that could be Someone's it. They might wide. not be able to replace it, which would see them drop to the back of the grid. Just they wouldn't have the pace to, to lap, you know, competitively. And that would be huge for us if that would be the case. Someone's gone wide there. Okay, both our drivers uh, have run for the full 30 minutes they needed to run. They've got their car knowledge up to 95%. That's excellent. And they have 100% knowledge for the track. So we are good to go. Just got to wait for the clock to run down and we can go straight to the race weekend. Or to the race itself. like a spin I was thinking about how I was going to start the race and whether I was going to go with an aggressive two-stop strategy and then I just remembered it's going to rain. <laughs> it's going to rain quite hard. I think we've had a so, car run wide. Yeah, I, until we see that prediction once we've qualified, no idea what to expect. We could be starting on wet tyres, we could be starting on dries and going on to wets very quickly. Um, yeah, we just have to see. It might be wet the whole race, it might dry out towards the end. Oh, 
We've just had a car run wide. The only thing we do know is that we can't really trust our weather centre that much. It is a bit uh, unpredictable. But we've given our drivers the best chance of doing something this weekend. It's all about them getting some uh, experience and some knowledge. So, into qualifying one, which is probably going to be our only qualifying session. Let's see how we do. Ready to check? So we're going to do two runs. Hopefully this one will be nice and clean. Nothing in the way when we start our flying lap. But uh, I'm not holding my breath on that one. Uh, and then what we'll do for the second run is we'll swap the positions around. So we'll get uh, um, Djokovic to lead and Vesti get him the, uh, the slipstream. See if we can't catapult one of our drivers into... 15th. So, which has the better pace? Driver 1 or driver 2? Let's find out. Best is starting his hot lap. Let's ride on board with Felipe. And uh, looks like we are going to get a clean run. Oh, McLaren's gone off at Tosa on their outlap. Looks like there's been a lockup. Let's take a look at the replay. Watch this. We're looking Did he at damage the car? Norris. Well, they've lost it. No. They've locked up. He kept it out the wall. Might have scuffed his tyres a little bit, but uh, shouldn't have done any damage to anything there. Uh, Vesti is slightly faster in the first sector. And the middle sector. So Vesti goes purples because he's the only one to set a time. <laughs> Uh, Felipe two tenths back. Okay. Um, I think, given that, it might be better to leave Vesti in front for the second run. See if we can uh, help out uh, Felipe a little bit. So let's get the boys back in the garage, put on some fresh tyres, and wait till the end of the session for the second run. Let's see what our pace is looking like against everyone else. Uh, three tenths off Joe. Three tenths ahead of Latifi. Uh, less than a tenth behind Albon. So we've got a chance of out qualifying Albon. 
He's actually going to be a very tough customer for us to deal with this season. Uh, I mean, the car is slightly worse than ours, but not by a lot. You know, our car is also pretty terrible. But he is a much more accomplished driver than our two boys. Right, so, let's send them both out. There we go. Uh, who is in front? Drogovic. Okay, we want Vesti in front. He's not going to pull over, is he? No, he's not. Okay, all right. We left that too long. So uh, Vesti's going to stay tucked in then. Oh, no, wait, no, Vesti has gone through. I was looking at the wrong car. Okay. So how much can we improve by? We should get an extra tenth or two out of uh, Drogovic. As Latifi goes up to 19th. And we don't actually have a first split for Vesti there. Maybe he was equal to his first run. Maybe that's why it's not giving us a coloured bar. Not faster, not slower. Uh, no, he's not showing a time in this run. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not good. Uh, Felipe slower in the middle sector. That'll be the dirty air effect, but hopefully he'll get a bit of a toe on these straights here. Albon's improved by two tenths. Vesti crosses the line. Uh, only marginally improves, and Drogovic only marginally improves as well. So 18th and 20th. Oof. Yeah, it's going to be a tough race. I don't even know if we're going to have the pace to stay with Albon, especially when the rain starts. This is going to be painful. It's race day, with the teams and drivers ready and raring to go. Aston Martin did a good job during qualifying, and they're pretty much where everyone expected them to be on the grid. Now, it's up to them to defy expectations during the race itself. Haas gave a solid performance in qualifying, and they'll be happy enough with their grid position here. Let's see if they can make it work for them. And the sky is looking grey and cloudy today. An effective tyre strategy could prove very valuable as the race plays out. Meanwhile, in the grandstands, the red wave is swelling. So let's find out who wins the day, here at Imola. So let's see what the uh, heavy rain is actually going to look like. Uh, not that heavy. Not that heavy at all. I think we could probably get away with Inters for most of this race. Uh, so we're going to start on softs. Uh, I am going to initially go for Inters. But that may change once I actually see a breakdown of the of the track report. Uh, and then we're going to be looking to go on to mediums to the end. So that is our strategy. Let's get rid of that. And that. Because they are worthless now. Save the change. There we go. Okay, so 
both our drivers are set, we are going to take out two laps of fuel because we are going to be very slow against the Ferraris here. <laughs> very slow indeed. Uh, yeah, okay, let's try and capitalize on the weather and see if we can't move up a couple of positions and then hang on for dear life. Let's go racing. It's a somewhat overcast day for the drivers, who've now taken position on the grid. Taking a look at the Aston Martin. Slower than most yesterday, so today they'll be starting from the bottom half of the grid. There's the second Aston Martin. They're in the back half of the pack, so they'll need to work hard if they want a podium finish. The teams are ready to go. All eyes are on the race here at the Amelia Romagna Grand Prix. And it's lights out, and away we go. All right, we're off. Let's uh, push the tires up push. a bit. Let's go aggressive off the start. See if we can't make a, a position or two. What's everybody else doing tire-wise in front of us? Mediums and hearts. Ooh. So we have got a chance here. Like Aston Martin have just gained a race position. You're doing a good job. So Vesti's managed to jump Alex. And now he's having a crack Aston at Martin the inside of Ricardo and he's got him. They've moved up a place. Drugovic has got past Latifi as well. That's it. Good start here. You're doing a good job. We want to absolutely maximise our uh, chance here because it's all going to go downhill once the rain comes, I think. We've just got to run the battery till it runs out. Try and make up as many positions with an aggressive dry running. Good job. Because we've only got a few laps before that rain hits. Uh, speaking of which, let's take a look actually at the track report. It is going to go wet in 11 minutes time, according to that. But how long is it going to stay wet? That is the most important thing. Now we can leave the two Williams cars in the dust here. Create a bit of a gap now while we've got the opportunity. It'll make it easier to fight them off and fight off an Albon later. Right, just wasting uh, Felipe's battery here trying to overtake his teammate when his teammate's trying to overtake someone else DRS is enabled and there we go, that's the end of Fred's battery. Pit windows in. You can see it's already getting a bit overcast and gloomy. Need to charge here, is And it's started raining already, so we're going to call both our drivers in. Let's uh, charge up both drivers on this lap. There's more rain now, so just watch for slippery conditions. And, oh, let's have a quick look. Uh, still can't get... 
can't get enough information. We are expecting rain. I've got to go into this lap. Sorry. It's just whether we stay out on the enters, I think. Box, box. Copy, box. Yeah, it's only going to be wet for a couple of minutes, so it's very much into weather. McLaren with a great overtake. Drop back a bit. Copy. We're good to push. You can Copy. see immediately how quickly uh, Albon got on the back of us there, and Ricardo getting back past ahead of Vesti, thanks to uh, better wet adaptability ratings. Okay, the Inters are on. Oh, he's getting held, which is having a knock-on effect on Vesti. We're going to be last. Yeah, we're last out the pits. Uh, okay, well, some of them have stayed out. Oh, quite a few stayed out, actually. Latifi stayed out. Uh, Schumacher, Gasly's gone straight to wets. Interesting. That's going to backfire on him, I think. Uh, Felipe is fully charged. Let's turn that off. Uh, Vesti on the back of Gasly, who's on the wrong tyres. go sneak through good stuff evening mr water and evening anthony aston martin with a great play there they've moved up a place All right the leaders are coming in how is you up in fit oh, of course because he didn't uh, he didn't pit last time out <laughs> that's why he's in fifth yeah, that'll change. Uh, we have clawed back some ground on some of these cars. How much is another matter, but we might actually gain a couple of places here. Look at that. All the way up to 10th. And Drogovic up to 13th. comes the fight <laughs> now comes the struggle uh, we're gonna see uh, Doing a good job. Gasly drop back a little bit I think until it gets very wet and then it's gonna get very yeah it's gonna get drier again Gasly's gonna have a very brief window where he's gonna be competitive same with Sonoda he's gone on to the full wets as well Well, I would expect Russell to swallow us up very quickly here. All right, here comes the full wet weather. It's only going to last a few minutes, apparently. According to that. And Russell's all over the back of us already. Gasly's tyres are going to be really switched on right now. And you can see he's immediately caught right back up with uh, 
with Russell and Felipe there. And here comes everybody else. Keep an eye on Sonoda as well. That gap to Schumacher is going to come down very quickly. All the track is like this. But yeah, Drogovic has only got a, a 48 rating when it comes to adaptability, so he is going to really struggle in these conditions. But he is holding everyone back right now. Uh, apart from Russell. Who <laughs> just dives around. Dives around in there. That's created a nice little buffer to uh, Albon and Vesti though. And there goes Gasly on those full wets. Now Norris is shaping up for a move. Let's focus. Drogovic is just going to drop right down the order here very quickly. That's a position gained for Alpha Tauri. Albon is on the back of Vesti. But Vesti is staying ahead for now. And Gasly has moved past Russell. Is anyone else going to bite and go onto the full wets? There's only going to be another few laps like this, and then it's going to dry out a bit more. And go very back, much back towards uh, favouring the Inters. Norris is going to swoop past us all here. And Joe might follow him through. No, Joe can't find his way through. So we only dropped one place there. And there's Sonoda, look. He flew past Schumacher and is straight position. on the back of this group Just here. But wind. now the track is starting to dry up a little bit. Those wets are going to go off very quickly now. Another, another lap or two, and then Sonoda's going to start dropping back again. And Gasly's going to start dropping back as well. Uh, oh, Vesti dropped. Still a lot to play for. Uh, didn't see that. Albon got past, and so did Gasly, who's charging past That's a good Albon right now. Alpine. Like I said, that track, though, it's it's coming back to the Inter runners. Gasly's going to start falling away again and going to need to pit for Inters. So that will drop him behind both of our cars again. Let's look and see where, where Magnussen was. He's up in fifth. That's not good. He's not going to stay Big there. Up, you're doing a good job. He is going to get caught and passed by a couple of cars as the race progresses. I would imagine Bottas will get past him, Leclerc will get past him, Perez will probably get past him. Maybe Russell. Ideally want him to drop out of the points. Along with Williams, Haas are the it's only other team that haven't Mercedes. scored any points yet. A position gained for Alfa Romeo. Oh yeah, Drogovic is really struggling. Look, Joe and Schumacher are through as well as Sonoda. Pass with an overtake there. His pace will pick up once the rain stops 
and the track dries up again, but how far back he's going to be by that point is, is the question. it had stayed wetter for just a little bit longer I might have taken the gamble and gone on to wets but a four minute window it's just not enough we're back in into territory and it looks as though the other little spike at least on this prediction isn't going to last very long either so uh, it's yeah, basically staying on these tyres to the uh, till the track dries up. And there isn't really much we can do to help our drivers out. You know, they're just they're not very good in these conditions, which is compounded by their poor braking and uh, other poor pace stats. And the fact that the car isn't great either. It's just a, a perfect storm of poor pace. doesn't look like we've actually saved much fuel either. How much fuel do we start on? So it saves about 3.3 kilos. Ooh, yellow flag. Has someone had a whoopsie? Who's running wide there? Hamilton. Let's take a closer look. Now watch this. Even in Jeremy. Is Hamilton involved in this one. They're forced wide. Uh, that's not going to really help us out at all in any way, shape or form. Yeah, we are just falling away from Albon right now. And that's not good. Uh, we, <laughs> we don't want a Williams to finish that close to the points. A, we don't want them to score points. B, we don't want them to finish in 11th um, or 12th really either. Uh, because that's going to move them above us in the... Uh, in the driver standings or the team standings even though they won't have any points they'll have had a higher place to finish than us Man, is, is Latifi catching us? he is oh Latifi's catching us There's a big queue forming behind Magnussen. Let's uh, jump up and have a look at that.
So we've got Magnussen, Bottas, Leclerc, Ricardo, Perez, and Gasly is now finally in to replace those tyres. So we're going to see Sonoda pit this lap as well, I would imagine. Yeah, there he goes, into the pits. So now Vesta should get back ahead of uh, Gasly. I don't know whether Felipe will. He's making his way out. I think he's going to get out ahead of Felipe. Yeah, he is. That's a shame. He just about hangs on to that position. He's about a second ahead of us. reminder for anyone who's just joined Jeremy <laughs> this is our challenge mode uh, campaign uh, where we are making things deliberately difficult for ourselves uh, all the rules for challenge mode can be found in the video description below uh, they are uh, the most up-to-date version of the rules I did add in an additional uh, rule when it came to uh, car research as well uh, so do check those out, uh, have a read of them. Uh, and like I said, I will uh, look to tweak the rules as we go through. If they are too difficult, then we will look to maybe make uh, some slight concessions. But I think we, sh we will probably be pretty good. But if you do have suggestions, uh, do let me know in, in the comments. Uh, I will check them out, I'll have a think about them. And if I like them, I think they'll work, I will add them into the rules. Vesti, he's down to 14th now. Honestly, I'll be happy with just getting a car in the top 15. Well, that's going to be a tall order. Because Joe's right behind us as well. Maybe we'll have a bit more luck when the track dries out. But, uh, we'll see. Bottas is through and looking to pull away from Magnussen. Leclerc is up next. Uh, Perez has got past Ricardo and has already uh, dropped him a little bit. This is good. We want as many cars to get ahead of Magnussen as possible. So if we don't want Haas to score any points here. So, uh, we've got a little gap to Schumacher, but not much. Let's hopefully let's see if we can hang on to the back of Joe for a while. It's unlikely. Like I said, both our drivers very poor in uh, changing conditions. Two leaders are quite a way ahead already. 
<laughs> from this little battle here. Uh, but they are not too far from catching up to the back of the field here. Uh, so, Sonoda currently in last place. Four and a half seconds behind Latifi, four and a half seconds behind us. Uh, the leaders are just coming around the final corner now. They're only 10 seconds, 12 seconds behind on the road. And they are lapping two to three seconds a lot faster. So they're going to be on them in the next five, six laps. Okay, on fuel. Okay, copy. Ah, we're fine on fuel. We are saving fuel. Uh, 1.7 uh, is what we need if we get lap once. You know, uh, or just below 1.7. Uh, given the pace <laughs> disparity that we're seeing at the moment, we're going to get lap twice. We haven't even done a third of the race yet. And we're already close to being lap. track is definitely drying up we're not too far from the rain stopping entirely actually looking at this only a few minutes away so uh, this period that we've got here where it's showing a long damp period I think we might be speeding through that a bit quicker than is actually the case that's good. We're going to be better in the dry than we are in the wet. Not by a lot, but it will help. And if we can time our pit stops better than the AI, we could potentially pull back a little bit of ground. Still, Magnussen holds back Leclerc. Don't oh, know, he squeezes it through. And Leclerc should now break away quite quickly from Magnussen. Now, how quickly can Perez get past him? trying to find a way through he's trying to pull those wing mirrors let uh, Kevin know that he's there and you can see he's got so much more pace he just can't use it at the moment and Leclerc has already pulled out a second Let's take a look at lap times. Uh, so obviously the, the times are coming down as the track is drying out. Uh, we are about half a second slower than Schumacher behind us. Um, Djokovic is now faster than Latifi, but not by much, but slower than the cars in front. Lapping a pretty similar pace to Vesti. We're starting to get to the point where our drivers are going to start performing a bit better than the cars around us where we've been losing a lot of time in, in the wetter conditions, now it's drying out, we should see their pace stabilise more. I mean, I'd love to boost their adaptability, but I mean, it's just so low on the list of priorities as to what to boost. I mean, it doesn't rain that often across the whole calendar. The majority of races are going to be dry races. And even the wet races are, are probably going to have some dry running in them for the most part. So we have to work on braking, we have to work on cornering, we have to work on reactions uh, and accuracy 
Uh, those are the four key stats. We also need to boost uh, control and smoothness as well to eliminate mistakes, make the tyres last longer, make you know, give us a wider range of strategy options. Uh, adaptability is just so far down the order. The only thing that's lower than that is the overtaken defence. And there goes Perez, finally forcing his way through the same way the Claire did. The Claire nearly two seconds on that faster than these two right now. He's already on the back of Bottas. Uh, yeah, Vesti matching pace now with Schumacher. Djokovic still a little slow across the line. He's actually slightly quicker now. So yeah, the track is definitely helping uh, our two drivers now that it's drying out. It is technically still raining. As uh, Vesti got passed, who passed him? Was it Schumacher? Yes, it was. Is that a new race position? Let's see if Vesti can hang with him. Oh, Gasly's right behind us. He's caught right back up. Yeah, he's going to sail past us. Need that track to dry out. And you can see a massive reduction there in the uh, in the curve. I think we're only uh, a lap or two away, say two laps from from slicks here. too early at the end of this lap and it is still raining and the rain hasn't finished yet there is a, a risk that it may spike a little bit again before it does actually dry out properly So while that rain is still falling, even if the track is still drying up, I'm not going to be switching to to slicks. Because I know that if I do, it's almost certainly going rain to... Uh, risk is receding. Yep, okay. It's almost certainly going to start raining again as soon as I put on uh, slicks. <laughs> so it's all raining harder. We are getting a, a warning from, uh, from Ben there. That the rain is receding. but it hasn't stopped. Drogovic has actually opened up the gap to Latifi again, uh, which is good, although that might be in part down to the fact that uh, Latifi has now been lapped by the front runners, uh, and they're not too far from Felipe himself. They're half a straight behind him. Let's uh, cut to Drogovic. We should be seeing them on the screen pretty soon. There is the Ferrari of Carlos Sainz. Closing very fast indeed. 2.3 seconds a lot faster.
it is still technically raining. Even though the track is almost bone dry now. And you see, I would have pitted. I would have come in and put slicks on, but... The fact that it's still raining worries me. It worries me that it's going to keep raining. And the track's going to get wetter again. Oh no, there we dry, go. So don't damage these tyres, especially high speed. Well, the track's dry, but it hasn't stopped raining. I don't think. Yeah, we're still seeing some rain on the screen. Not a lot. Uh, oh, do I gamble? Do I gamble? Well, at, at this point, I don't really have that much to lose with Drogovic. So let's let's gamble with uh, with Drogovic. It's very early for uh, for mediums. Very early indeed. Bit too early, really. Um, hards will go the distance and will be quicker. So, yeah, let's box for hards. Box, box. Yeah, copy, box, box. So we don't really have Copy. anything to lose with Felipe right now. He's so far back from anyone else. This might help him at least claw back a bit of time That's a position gained for to his Alpha teammate. Towering. Stop drying up. That worries me. I'm watching that <laughs> track water level like a hawk right now. Waiting for that to start eking back up again. Alright, so we get a lap by Alonso. And it is still drying up. And there is the rain has stopped warning. So let's box Freddy. Box, box. Okay, to the pit. Right, nobody that. else has pitted yet. So make sure you get your pit limiter, pit limiter as you come in the pit lane. And there you can see the sun is shining again now. And here come all the mechanics out for the race leaders. Decent stop, 2.9 seconds, that'll do. So we've had to observe blue flags, and that's cost us more time that we couldn't really afford to lose. But we have closed right up on Latifi again already. Well, has Latifi stopped? No, he has. He's got mediums as well. That means he's probably going to have to stop again. Uh, Felipe's race is... He's already ruined. He's going to be having to pull over so much.
All right, Albon and Gasly are in the pits. Can we gain a little bit of time on them? Has Sonoda pitted yet? No, Sonoda's pitting now. All right, Albon's back on track. Gasly's coming out now. We're ahead of Sonoda. Sonoda is pitting this lap. Ah, we're too far away to get into the slipstream of Gasly. Okay, so we did gain a, a couple of seconds back on Albon, but not a huge amount. Maybe three, four seconds, but certainly not enough to make a difference. Sonoda's still ahead of Drogovic. That's not good. All those blue flags cost us dearly there. The whole field's gone on to mediums apart from us. Oh, okay, so we're going to struggle <laughs> for pace compared to the rest of the field, but they're going to have to pit again. Maybe we did play this wrong by going for Haas. Maybe we could have gone soft, soft. I didn't even consider soft, soft. Let's just see, would that have worked? Is that something we could have done? Could. We could have gone soft, soft. Ah, nuts. Ah, oh, well, never mind. All right, we managed to jump Schumacher. So we're back up to 16th. Schumacher lost a lot of time there as he got lapped by both uh, the, uh, the Snappen and Sainz. Now we're going to lose that time. Use energy if you need. So we are officially lapped. We need to save 0.7 kilos of fuel now in the remaining 35 laps. That's easy to do. Yeah, I just can't keep pace with the uh, front runners even for that short period of time. Can't get their DRS. All right, well, if we get a safety car, which is not beyond the realm of possibility, then we can box and we can put on some mediums and go to the end on a set of mediums. Or maybe even softs, depending on when they, that happens. Uh, and we will be able to unlap ourselves as well. I have now experienced uh, my drivers unlapping themselves under a safety car, which was pretty cool. We're not okay on fuel. Sorry. Right, let's encourage the overtake. We just need to charge up. Yeah, copy. Before the DRS zone. I think we just edged him out across the line there. Yeah, he got the DRS, not us. Damn it. Hey! 
pass with an overtake. Right, let's see if we can stay with him. Uh, <laughs> no is the answer. We lost half a second. Nearly half a second just going through that, that first couple of corners. Now oh, we have so little pace and the fact that we're on a, a harder compound of tyre does not help. I fear that's it for this race, 17th and maybe 19th. Latifi's doing a good job of hanging onto the back of Sonoda right now. And every time we try and start closing the gap, another car comes through and laps us and we have to pull over and lose a chunk of time. get Alonso and Leclerc past us as quick as we can and get a bit of battery in the process and then try and hang with them as best we can with a, a battery deployment to try and really close up on Latifi and capitalise on him getting lapped as well. See if we can at least move off the back of the grid. Hopefully we can get the DRS. Yes, we can. All right, so the plan here is to try and stay with these guys as long as we can, which is going to be a, a very tall order. I think we're probably going to lose them by the end of this straight, but at least by getting the DRS here, We've got a chance of staying with them a little bit longer. And we will gain some time on uh, Latifi that he will lose when he gets lapped. And if we can stay with them, we might even be able to follow them through as they go past Latifi. It's going to be a tall order, but we'll give it a go push a bit more. Okay, copy. If I can get DRS on this lap as well, that would be amazing. I think they're just outside of a second there. Yeah, we didn't get it. Ah, that's a shame. All right, we did Save what we fuel. could. Save fuel. Oh, yeah. We were five and a half seconds behind Latifi once we got uh, lapped. Oh, oh, yellow flag. Someone's in the wall. We've had a Sonoda. Crash. Let's have a look. Now look at this. It was the Alpha Tauri driver involved. Right, how bad's the damage? 
Oh, he went in pretty fast. News for the team. It's definitely a broken front wing. Maybe some other damage to the car as well. Fingers crossed in that respect. That was a bitter blow for the team. But yeah, um, we managed to pull back about a second and a half to Latifi. Uh, just pushing like that and getting the DRS for that one straight. So that will definitely help us. Oh, Vesti's locked up. Let's see what happened there. So this was the Aston Martin. Well, they've locked up. They won't have been happy about okay. that. Okay, got away with that. And the team had such... That wouldn't be called challenge mode if it wasn't a challenge. Uh, got some more back markers coming to, or front runners coming to lap us. Sonoda is in front of them. He should be diving into the pits this lap. Placing that broken front wing. There he goes. Desperately wanted safety car. <laughs> the safety car will really help us so much. And there we go, we're just two seconds behind Latifi now, now that he's been lapped. Magnussen is 10th, but unfortunately he's still 20 seconds ahead of Norris, so it looks as though Magnussen is going to score some points. Unless something happens. That isn't good. That means we're going to be, uh, with Williams, the only teams without points, and it's going to make getting 9th or getting 8th in the championship even harder because McLaren have already scored. Haas are going to by the, by the look of it. Because Norris is too far behind to do anything. Oh, he got passed on that last lap, didn't he? That's why. Uh, we're going to get passed on this lap, so again, not going to be able to check pace against him. Can I stay with... Energy if you need it. Yep. Bottas here, I doubt it, but we'll try. No saving required. No. Just do what you can. Yep, copy. Maybe if we can get him under braking. Uh, it's close. I think we just missed it. Yeah. Oh, no, we got it. We got the DRS. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Take it easy. There's no way we're getting it for another lap, but again, that just brings that a little bit closer to Latifi once he gets lapped. Okay, that's one through. Perez has got him. He slows down coming out of Aqua Minerale.
and there he is just one point well just over a second ahead 1.4 seconds oh, don't tell me he's going to get the DRS please don't get DRS I don't think he did no, we didn't. Yeah. We actually closed the gap ever so slightly at the end of the straight there. Alright, game on. Chance to uh, to get back ahead of Latifi here. He kind of stuck in no man's land. Long way ahead of Latifi, a long way behind Schumacher. Push more. Stop it. We're going to try and push onto the back of Latifi so we can start charging the battery. Try and ride the DRS for a few laps. Science is already <laughs> two thirds of a lap away, you know, ahead of ahead of us again. Uh, again, we're looking at maybe another ten laps, and we're getting lapped again. We're not okay on fuel. Yeah, nothing. Oh, so now it's gone on to uh, softs. Didn't expect that. I want to get on the back of the TV before uh, Ham, uh, so before Russell gets onto us here. We're close. Just not quite there. Use energy. Did we get him under braking? I don't think we did. No, we didn't. Just lacking that little extra bit of power that we need. And we are about to get lapped, so... Let's... Get that out of the way. Save fuel. Love you. We can push more. Yeah, I got it. Russell here, uh, but I'm hoping that uh, Latifi's going to lose quite a bit of pace pulling over for for Russell. Everything he's got. Which 
isn't much, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, and there we go, he, he pulls over in the same spot that we did. And we do carry a lot more speed through the corner there. We are just about in DRS range, can we stay there? Desperately need that DRS. We're so close, so close. range no we missed it again At this rate, I'm wondering whether or not it might be better to just box him for a set of softs and just really go for it. battery but I, if I put the car in charge I'm going to drop further and further back it's, uh, it's got to hope for a mistake this is where uh, Felipe's lack of consistency um, and his reactions um, his low reaction score isn't helping that and the fact that the car is crap I'm pushing those tyres hard a bit too hard, really. It's a safety car when you need one. Oh, we've had a lock up. Flag. That was Magnuson. I think that was a crash. Here's the replay. Oh, if he's broken his wing, that's going to put him out behind Norris. He has. Oh, glorious. It's not a safety car, but it's the next best thing. It's it's a Haas dropping out of the points. Felipe can't actually do anything. He's actually falling further behind now. So, Magnuson boxes for a new front wing. He's probably going to go on to soft the remainder of the race. I would at that point. There goes Norris and Ocon. And Joe and Gasly are going to get him as well. Oh, glory, 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 glory. <laughs> and 
potentially he's going to get lapped by Hamilton. Even better if he gets lapped by Hamilton. Another lockup, and this one's in sector three. Oh, there we go, it's a rebel right in front of us. I'm going to box Felipe, put on some fresh softs. He's he's not gaining on the seat. He's actually losing ground, and I'm worried that at this rate he's going to drop behind Sonoda. So uh, we may as well put him onto uh, much faster tyres. And uh, you know, at least get back behind Sonoda and uh, make sure that we can secure that position. It upsets me that we are slower than Latifi, the slowest driver on the grid. Well, I say slowest, slowest of the regular drivers. Hoping we'd get to the pits before we got lapped by Ricardo there. That cost us another few seconds. Copy. Right, we're going to come out in a really bad spot here. We're going to come out behind Norris, Ocon, Joe. Well, Norris and Ocon. Actually, we might be able to stay with them now. We're on brand new softs. Let's see. They're on 65% mediums. We're on brand new, uh, brand new soft tyres. Can we actually stay with them here? That would be good if we can piggyback off their pace. Energy if you need it. didn't quite get DRS. It says low fuel range, but we're two laps down, so that's 3.4 kilos. So we've got a kilo of spare fuel, effectively. Uh, I don't know if I've got enough tyres to last. Yeah, I have. Let's do it. Let's push the pace a little bit more. No saving required. Yeah. Don't want to get lapped by even more cars. I'm trying to stay ahead. That's inevitable at the moment. I have uh, inexperienced drivers. Yeah, <laughs> I've got complete rookies and a, and a horrible car. Like I said, you know, this season's going to be painful, very painful. 
points are going to be a luxury that we can ill afford. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think you know any points we get this season, uh, they're going to be like unicorn's teeth. Right, we haven't quite got the pace to stay with uh, Ocon, but so maybe we've got the pace to stay with Joe and Gasly. There goes Joe. There goes uh, Mr. Williams, world champion. Excellent, there we go. I can actually get some battery in the car and uh, charge up and still keep pace, for at least for a, a little while. We haven't got an immediate threat of being lapped behind us either, which is good. Right, what's the gap to Sonoda? 12 seconds, oof. Those blue flags have hurt us. Use energy. Copy. going to be a very long and laborious way to charge up the battery but cannot afford to drop the DRS here. Ow. My poor ankle. We're not okay on fuel. Yeah, Can't probably. keep pushing on fuel indefinitely for Felipe. Even though we've still got technically some in reserve, we are wearing the tyres out faster by doing this. We don't seem to be gaining on Sonoda though, which is annoying. Is he, is he doing what we're doing? No. Oh, he's on soft as well. Ugh. Damn it, I didn't realise. I forgot he was on soft as well. Mediums are starting to drop off a little bit. Uh, Vesti is... safe from Latifi and Sonoda, but without some kind of intervention is not moving any, any higher.
I think I might actually box Vesti with a lap or two to go and just go full, full burn and start charging his battery in preparation for that. See if we can get the fastest lap. We won't get a point for it, but we will fulfill uh, a sponsor incentive and get a little bit of cash if we can actually nab the fastest lap. So a last minute switch onto brand new softs should hopefully see us grab that fastest lap. You know, bonus money. by another Ferrari here. I think that's Leclerc behind us. Yeah, it is. Hamilton's right behind him. Okay, 11 laps to go. Well, we were going to lose it anyway once we'll, we'll soon as we got locked in lap. At least we've got battery to try and stay with the Ferrari when it gets through. I'm just thinking what could have been if we'd been able to go soft, soft. start burning off some of this excess fuel get the weight of the car down a little bit because we're going to get lapped a second time you can stop lifting coast okay. oh so now it's pitting he couldn't make the tyres last he's having to pit again this glory, lap. glory, glory. That is so glorious. That gives us... That gives us a position back. Is anyone else going to have to pit? We should should be safe from Sonoda, but 
every car that laps us brings us further, you know, pushes us further down and closer back towards him. See if we can at least get back on the DRS of Gasly here. No saving required. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Get that DRS. Yeah, I think we got it. Yes, we did. Good stuff. We're going to get uh, blue flagged, so let's box now. Box, box. Copy that. fresh soft tyres we are still comfortably going to be well I say comfortably we're going to be out just behind Latifi I think actually but we're going to be so much faster than him in fact if I can stick behind it oh oh yellow flag sector three what's happened So they're locked up. Oh, even better. That works beautifully. We can take a look now. Now let's look at this. The focus on Sonoda. It's a lockup. Excellent. That... So that pretty much guarantees that he won't have the pace to catch Djokovic now. If we can get right on the back of uh, Latifi here, we can DRS our way. We just need to push now. Sorry. Past him on the main straight and get an even better speed boost for the uh, fastest lap attempt. There we go, that's the IRS range. Pass. Not as convincing as I would have liked, but we made it. That's it. And now we can blitz away from him. Come on, fastest lap. Aston Martin with a great play there. They've moved up a place. We've got this, this tiny, tiny window where he can go for this because we've got a load of traffic behind us. It's basically this lap or bust, I think, for fastest lap. Safe fuel, safe fuel. We are purple in the middle. Is this going to be enough? The Stappen's pitting. And we did get fastest lap, but if with the Stappen pitting, we're probably going to lose that. <laughs> Which is so annoying.
we'll keep pushing for a second lap just in case and also we you know might as well use up these tyres and see what we can do Doubt will improve. Oh, and we are purple in the middle sector again. Down in the first sector because we didn't have DRS. And that's yep, no battery. more battery. And Verstappen's just gone purple in the middle sector on his outlap. But it's not encouraging. Okay. Five laps to go. Let's calm the car down now. Get back up. Okay, copy. We've done all we can. Latifi pits. We are, we are past Latifi. Hallelujah. Oh. is going to pit. My God, half the field could pit. Albon could pit. Gasly could pit. I mean, the front runners doesn't really make any difference to us, but it, we are going to lose fastest lap. I'm pretty much sure of that now, but if everybody suddenly pits, He's, a, he's, he's more than a pit stop ahead. I mean, I've taken a huge amount of time out of him over the last couple of laps, but... Five more laps. Five more laps. Yep, there goes our fastest lap. It was, it was glorious while it lasted. We held it for two laps. Gasly's pitting. Doesn't really help us that much. I mean, it might free us up to go a little bit faster with Drogovic, but not much. Gasly was a whole lap ahead of us, so. Well, a whole, whole lap ahead of uh, Drogovic anyway. Uh, he's still a long way ahead of. Uh, Vesti is just coming out the pits now. We are half a lap behind him. Albon stays out. We've taken another second and a half out of him. Although we're about to get laps. Come on, get the DRS. Get the DRS. All right, if Albon pits now on the last lap. <laughs> with you know a couple of laps to go that would be amazing four more laps four more laps that would be absolutely amazing yeah, probably. happy to push what are his tires 34%. Oh, it's going to be touch and go. Sainz is staying out there. He's on 29% tyres. He's got one more lap to go after this one. Surely he's not going to pit. Leclerc coming up behind us. 29% tyres. Okay we could not even stay anywhere close to the back of Verstappen. Not that surprising, I suppose, really. Nope, Sainz stays out. Uh, Albon didn't pit. Uh, we are way too far behind to do anything about it, despite being faster than him. But Magnussen is not going to score points, which is fantastic. That keeps Haas on zero points with Austin Williams. 
Uh, Albon, just, you know, that wet weather killed us. So this is last lap, last lap, you can push the tyres. Yeah, that wet weather killed us early on. Uh, oh, Sonoda is steaming up on the back of Drogovic here. Pick up the pace a bit. Let's make sure we at least stay ahead of, uh, of, uh, of Yuki here. Carlos Sainz taking the win. We are going to come home in 17th and 18th. And Sainz crosses the line first. He's taken the win. Check it flag. Check it flag. It's about the best we could have hoped for, really, 17th and 18th. That sounds like someone's gone wide there. It's disappointing that we finished behind Albon, but it's to be expected with a wet race. You know, with flag. such low adaptability ratings for both our drivers, you know, any wet weather's going to hurt us you know, more than the rest of the competition. The car still needs a lot of work. Uh, we have got a new chassis on the way and uh, a new underfloor. I think the underfloor is going to drop just in time for Barcelona, which is two races away. Uh, we're going to Miami next. We might have the chassis in time for Miami. But I get the feeling that's going to be a Barcelona upgrade as well. It was a pretty good performance today from Aston Martin's driver. Aston Martin had a good enough weekend, but there's still some margin for improvement here. Yes, there's no doubt that they have what it takes. I can't wait to see which direction they go in for the next race. With the race wrapped up, the team is ranked in ninth in the constructor standings. Coming up next, the teams will be taking a trip to the Sunshine State. The Hard Rock Stadium is laying down the track for a captivating race at the Miami Grand Prix. Uh, apologies for accidentally clipping the microphone with my arm there. Uh, so, yeah, in the end, a uh, 17.9 for Max. Uh, that kind of blew our 18.4 out of the water a little bit. But I think he was the only one who actually went fast. Oh, no, Lewis was slightly faster as well. Uh, but literally just less than a tenth faster than us when it came to faster slap attempts. Uh, we were faster than Charles Leclerc's best lap. And with that, actually, 14.04. Ah, we were equal with Hamilton. We equaled his time, or he equaled our time. Uh, yeah, so that's not bad, you know, that we could churn out a lap that quick at the uh, at the end there. Uh, Sainz has uh, a nice little stranglehold on the title at the moment compared to his teammate, uh, who has a uh, significant points deficit to him, 17 points off at the moment. That's, uh, that's quite a big gap after just four races. Uh, Max in between the two Ferrari drivers, uh, Perez stays fourth no one changing positions in the top seven here uh, just different allocations of points going out fernando does climb two places though above uh, norris and ocon with a strong eight point finish uh, ricardo gets another couple of points well gets a couple of points to get him off the board he moves up three spots and uh, thankfully no points for haas no more points for avatari either so they are still potentially uh, a team that we could try and battle with towards the end of the season if we can get enough out of the cars upgrades this year. 
Uh, Ferrari have a 20 point lead over Red Bull in the constructors. Uh, Mercedes are a distant third uh, on just 53 points, but they are pulling away from Alpha in, in fourth, Alpine in fifth, McLaren in sixth. Uh, three teams yet to score. Uh, the longer it stays like that, the better for us. Uh, Freddy gets a development point. Uh, Felipe does not, but he will get one after the next race. And we didn't make any of our incentives. We briefly held the fastest lap incentive, but Max took that away from us. Uh, but we've still come out with 4.1 mil. Uh, our helipad is improved, and that will help with uh, payouts. Our scouting department is upgraded. Uh, so we have an extra scout to play about with now. Uh, let's take a look at our emails. Uh, a difficult race, the board not particularly pleased. Not a lot we can do about that at the moment, we are working on it. Let's drop the final upgrade on the helipad. Uh, let's check in with the board actually. They are disappointed with Imola. Uh, they're going to be disappointed with the next one as well. Uh, this is potentially going to hurt us. I really hope we don't get fired. <laughs> um, if we can get a couple of points finishes uh, in this season, that will help take some of the pressure off, I think. Um, we are in desperate need of getting the design centre as quickly as we can. We've still got 35 days to go. It's still over a month away. Uh, so we can get that third development slot. Now, uh, do we have any points for our development team? No, we don't. Uh, Andrew Green's are way off yet. Alessandro is still a few weeks away as well. Uh, let's allocate another point into breaking for Freddy. That gets him up to 72. That's good. And... How far away are our new parts? Oh, the chassis will drop the day of Miami. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, and then the underfloor will drop in 24 days, which will be uh, the day of Barcelona. So we've got a couple of new parts on the way. Can't wait long, you know, for those. You know, the sooner the better. Uh, we do have a new ATR period starting next week as well. So uh, once we do get the chassis upgrade we can start to think about maybe where we want to put our next allocation of uh, hours for our next major upgrade remember we are limited to just uh, two major upgrades per part per season so i don't want to do uh, uh, another underfloor too early because we're limited to just one more underfloor now or at least one more major underfloor uh, we could start with a rear wing uh, that would definitely help reduce some drag boost our drs speed um, improve our cornering a little bit and hopefully improve our, our top speed a little bit as well uh, a front wing would certainly give us really good cornering and uh, would also improve our brake cooling i mean we can't really go ahead and drop on a, a major upgrade until we finish the underfloor because We've only got four engineers being freed up. And that's going to take a long time. So we might have to wait until the underfloor is done to get the other six engineers and then put them on the front, on you know, either the front or rear wing, whichever one we go with. So what I might do is I might go for a side pod upgrade when the chassis finishes just to try and uh, improve drag reduction. Uh, maybe improve our engine cooling a little bit uh, in the process but I'm more focused on improving drag reduction uh, and uh, making the car uh, a little bit slippier a little bit faster let's check out that new suspension uh, in our warehouse did we finally get full uh, part knowledge on it not quite 
we are at uh, 71% uh, car park knowledge on that. So uh, we will top that off uh, in the next practice session. We went in with a zero uh, car park knowledge on that part. I don't know if having uh, full car park knowledge actually boosts the car a little bit. It would be nice if it did. I don't know if it does. I don't think it does. But uh, yeah, a bit of work to do. So uh, that is where we're going to leave it tonight. We'll kick off the start of tomorrow in the build up to uh, Miami and the uh, bit of development before we go into the Grand Prix itself. Um, so until then, thanks for watching. I am Jim Bob, and I will be back with more challenge mode on F1 Manager 2022 tomorrow, uh, same time, 10 p.m. UK time. So until then, bye for now.